So um, we're going to wrap testimony on these three measures, unless anyone feels they haven't adequately been heard. Okay, members, uh, why don't we go into questions and discussion. Um, we'd I'd like to start by uh, having Gary Hooser come up. Yeah, and we'll ask people, and my apologies to be succinct, because we do have a great number of bills still to hear, although probably significantly less testimony left. Um, the question I guess I would have for you, Councilman, is um, could you explain, I guess, the impact of, of the buffer zone on small farmers and disclosure on small farmers? That has been resonating as a concern. Um, it was brought up by one of my colleagues. Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, on Kauai, we, we went through these hearings for about a year or more, and, and I learned a whole lot. And I, I emailed everyone, every member of the, of the committee, of all the committees, a document which has hyperlinks to the source documents that I'm about to reference. Uh, so the, everything I'm going to say is backed up by source documents. Um, and this is based on the raw Kauai data provided by the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. It shows three, use, three years of restricted use pesticide purchases. So that data shows everybody that purchased restricted use pesticides in Kauai County over three years. And that shows that no other real Hawaii farmer on Kauai, in Kauai County, uses these restricted use pesticides to any degree whatsoever. In three years, there might have been one or two farmers that used a little bit uh, during that period. So is your answer, um, Councilman, that there would be no impact on small farmers from a bill like this? No impact whatsoever. And if I could add real quick, I know we're running out of time, but they, there was uh, three other things that I just wanted to add real quickly and then I'm done. In the same document, the same source documents, uh, it's often said the state and county also uses large amounts of pesticides. And the truth is that the state and county use uh, Roundup uh, on roadside spraying is primarily what they use. The state uses very small amounts in natural resource protection, very small amounts. Kauai County uses chlorine gas, which is technically a pesticide. Use pesticide. So it's, it's a contained, it's not sprayed in the open fields. And golf courses, this is an interesting thing. People say, well, what about golf courses? They use a lot of pesticides too. The same data shows that on Kauai, all our golf courses combined, we have about five different golf courses, shows they use combined about 50 pounds and 20 gallons of restricted use pesticide. 50 gallons, and that's not good, granted. But you compare it to the five companies we use 5,477 pounds and 4,324 gallons during the same time period. So yes, other people use restricted use pesticides, but the front, by and large, the most are used by the large agro-control <coughs> businesses and, and other large agribusinesses in general. Thank you. Mr. Manfredi? What was, what, what was the period, of, what was the interval of time, Councilman? How many years? This is a three-year period. Which, for those numbers, for those? For the 5,477 pounds, was that a one year? That's an annual thing, that's an annual thing. Yeah, but taken off a three year report. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was uh, one of those three years or annualized over those three years. But the data, again, the hard copy data from the Hawaii Department of Agriculture is available via the link, exact data that I made the calculations on. Could you have a question also? Yes. <coughs> I think he spoke about Kauai's experience. Is there statewide data similar to what he provided, Oahu, Maui County, and Big Island County? Um, I, I'm sure there is data like that. Uh, when I requested it for Kauai County, uh, as a council member, I had to pay $400 to get it, and I had to wait six weeks to get it. Uh, since that time period, I requested uh, updated data from the Department of Agriculture, and I'm unable to get it uh, broken down by company. So they were at one time available, but now it's not available. I'm sure to the chair of the Agricultural Committee and, and these various committees that information would be available to you. Thank you. I guess for Scott Enright, do you have a similar, um, have you been able to obtain the information like uh, Councilmember Hoosier for the other counties as well as Kauai? And to be clear, this is sales data, it's not use data. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Excuse me, Senator, I didn't catch the question. The question again? Councilmember Gazer had shared with us the amount of um, pesticides that are used, I guess, restricted use, um, compared to um, 
for Kauai County, and that says to me a very significant amount um, that he had described, 5,477. There was a small amount. What <clears throat> small amount? This was a different time when I spoke about. Gary, what was the other amount? But it was so much smaller in use. What was that other category? So I want to know if there is data for Oahu. Because I'm assuming there are a lot more homeowners here on Oahu. Maybe compared to the farmers here on Oahu, okay, and so I don't know if we should just be focusing on farmers. So the data that I... Depending on the county. So in the document I sent you, there's a link to the report I got from the Department of Agriculture showing three years of data that track the purchases of restricted use pesticides in Kauai County. And so that's where this data comes from. So it includes everybody, it includes the county, it includes golf courses, it includes anyone who buys restricted use pesticides only. There, there is no information whatsoever on the use or purchase of glyphosate or general use pesticides. So I mean, that's pretty astounding, I think. Uh, but so mine only reflects restricted use pesticides. Mm -hmm. So for Oahu, for example, where there may be, a, the residential population is higher, I, I'm just wondering if we should be focusing on not only the large farmers, but also the households, depending on the counties. Uh, so I need to understand if you have any numbers in terms of who purchases restricted yes. pesticides. Yes, Senator, we have the numbers on restricted use pesticide. On the general use pesticide, we don't track those. But Tom Matsuda, the branch manager from the department's pesticide branch, is here. Thank you. Tom, can you answer that question? Sure. Yeah. REP's sales record for that period, 2010, 11, 12, was provided to Councilmember Hoosier. So we have breakdown statewide. Uh, for him, it was just Island, uh, Kauai County only. Uh, his secondary request for additional information uh, and why it's not being provided, it takes a lot of man hours to go through uh, the records. And we had uh, talked to our legal counsel about that. And we could only provide certain types of information. Is it because the company, I would not think we have a lot of companies that sell this product. Also, oh, the dealers you're talking about. Let's are we getting sell. pesticides from the internet or other no, things? Or no. it, so it's purchased here, correct? Purchased here, correct. So I don't think there is that many companies selling this product, so why wouldn't we be able to identify their overall sales and the, the subset of okay. restricted pesticides? Uh, I'm asking Mr. Masuda. Yeah. So I'm in a choir. There's only two dealers. So if you're in business mm -hmm. and you post your sales and I'm the other guy and I minus my sales from you, guess what? I know how you're doing. So this is kind of the protected uh, information we were looking at just so posting. Department of Ag doesn't. Department of Agriculture doesn't provide that. Um, I guess kind of oversight over the sales at all. When you say oversight, we receive sell, sales records from all the dealers. Okay. Statewide. Statewide. Mm -hmm. We would be able to just post that statewide total. That's not a problem. Let me interrupt. Okay. But there's not county data, where at least, because it seems like depending on the combination, I am just wondering if the focus of the bill needs to be broadened or not, and I don't have enough information to say. Okay. And I'm going to actually interrupt here. Okay. First, a couple questions, a couple of clarifications. I just want to make sure. Residential users can't use restricted use pesticides, is that correct? correct. Okay, so I don't want us to get off track. This is about restricted use pesticides, and that's what this bill is about. Okay, um, we will be taking up those other pesticide questions, but the purpose of these measures is on restricted use pesticides and that broad discussion, which is all the research and all of the 
request for testimony has been about today. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Other questions? Yes. <coughs> so for the Department of Agriculture, um, the figures that Councilman Hoosier gave was that over the past three years, there was in by the five seed companies total on the island of Kauai, an annualized amount of restricted use pesticides were used, 5,477 pounds and 4,324 gallons. Is that roughly your figures? Is that an accurate amount? Okay, for that period, according to my records, the average use, 9.89 tons of active ingredient. Now you have to understand, uh, Pesticides are sold either dry weight or gallon. A, a volume gallon, a lot of people think it's eight pounds. That's not the case. Product like cologne, it may weigh 10 pounds. Others, the active, and again, the active is the side that does the killing. Okay, so, so, that's, okay. so you have about 9.89 tons, tons over the three, three year, year period, period okay. of active ingredient. Okay, and that's between the five. No, there's the there's, uh, four seed and one uh, okay. coffee. Um, four seed and one coffee, okay. Uh, when you take a look at all other users of restricted use pesticides combined on the island of Kauai, what's the amount of active ingredient by weight over that same three year period? Combined, I will say that with the threshold that they set, those for the largest users. I can't give you a percentage. No, I'm not asking for a percentage. Yeah. You, you're saying that 9.89 tons were used by the four seed companies and the coffee farm Correct. over that three year period. Are there other users of restricted use pesticides on the island of Kauai? Yes, the okay. of course. What was the total? I, that weight? I don't have. Okay, because I just, I just want to yeah. know like how far apart are they? For the island of Oahu, where the seed companies are also operating on. Over that three year period, what was the weight of the active ingredient used? Uh, I don't have that information in front of me, but we can get that for you. Okay. Is it safe to say, though, in follow up to um, the good coach's question, that the big agriculture companies are using gigantic amounts of restricted use pesticides and the other users are barely using any in comparison? Is that a fair I, statement? No. I said they're using a lot more, but not gigantic. So we're just being honest and just you know, call. Well, you didn't bring the numbers, sir. You didn't have the numbers. Did you yeah. prepare for this hearing or not? Not. You did for the statewide. You should have those numbers here if you're going to be a good representative of the state. That's right. If you're going to challenge my word, gigantic. Bring the numbers next time right. for your job. We'll do. This. Thank you. Because in the follow-up, what I'd be interested in knowing is uh, to be able to compare the proportion of restricted use pesticide on the island of Kauai, but also on the island of Oahu, because I know we do have some larger farming operations here on Oahu. And so if you can get that to the chairs, um, by tomorrow. To then be distributed, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Oh, you yeah, have a question for the Director of Agriculture, please. So I was reading your testimony, I noticed you mentioned that our bill does not demonstrate the connection between our, our threshold criteria. And, um, you know, you, you go on to say that a low volume purchaser of restricted use pesticides might actually cause an equal amount of harm through less careful application. Are you suggesting that we should include much lower volumes as a threshold, or are you saying that any threshold is unworkable. You know, uh, what I would first point out, which is what I pointed out in my brief introductory remarks, is that with everything that we do in, in terms of regulating pesticides be science-based. The, the data that we have at the Hawaii Department of Agriculture in terms of abuses of restricted use pesticides show us that it's our smaller agriculturalists that are more prone to abuse than the companies that have been targeted. Because, you know, we can see quite obviously from the testimony that's been given, this is a, one segment of agriculture. It's, it's the biotechnology companies that have been targeted. And we don't see, we don't have the data, Chair, to, to show that they're the problem in applying pesticides. 
Well, just this, this bill have, also think. addresses uh, use by schools and, and institutions yeah. like that. I mean, I've heard many times that we're targeting a certain group of, of farmers and nobody else. The bill includes other people who use these same pesticides. I find it hard to understand how you think we're targeting farmers when it seems that the bill is targeting users, large users of restricted use pesticides. Period. Not small users, not users of any pesticides, large users of restricted use pesticides. We're targeting those users of the pesticides, not farmers, right? Um, that would be correct. Okay, so so in terms of the science-based aspect, do you do you agree that there's any risk whatsoever with the large-scale use of pesticides? You know, it, it depends on the application. And, you know, if the application is according to label, everything that the department knows. Now, you know, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, along with all 50 states, relies on our federal partners to, te to you know, ch test the technology, be it biotechnology or be it pesticides. And so what we know is that if you use the product according to the label, it's safe. Is there no risk whatsoever? There's always risk. Okay. And there's risk in the human condition. So let's look at a science-based approach to risk. We have risk. We don't know exactly where it comes into play, at what threshold, and at what distances. Is the appropriate response to an unknown level of risk zero regulation? Good question. Uh, no. Okay. Would be the short answer. Thank you. Uh, quick follow-up, and then I'm going to move right in here. Just um, how many regulators do you have, Director, on Kauai? Or One. Okay, so that was correct. I just wanted to check. No, that's, that's correct. And Maui? Maui, two. One. 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 Is that sufficient? We are in the stages of hiring the second inspector on Kauai. So you'll have three to cover those two islands after the hiring. After the hiring, correct. But we also have inspectors on Oahu. If there's a need, we will fly the inspectors from Oahu uh, to Kauai if there's some kind of incident that requires that. Uh, my observation is that's not a lot of manpower to check a lot of major farming activity. That's correct. But we, we are relying on the training for the certified applicators. We hold them to a higher standard. But we hold them to a higher standard, but without anybody to hold them. That's the problem. There's no one to... True. We, but we have all different type of inspections, not only with the farmers of the uh, seed companies. We have the regular vegetable farmers, cattle growers. We have the pest control operators. We respond to complaints. We also check with the stores that sell pesticide products to be sure that it is properly licensed. But you only have these very small number of people. Exactly. And that's, yeah. Which is a, a large crux of this problem. Yeah, a yeah. 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 Co couple questions. Uh, I can't handle it. I'm sorry. But um, is it true that some of the restricted use pesticides that are being used here in Hawaii by the large agri agribusiness companies are banned in other countries? Yes. Okay. And can I have the representative from Syngenta come forward, please? Martin Phillipson, is that correct? That's correct. The que uh, maybe this is more of an observation, but my understanding is that atrazine is banned in the European Union and in Switzerland, and I understand that Syngenta is based in Switzerland. Is that correct? That, that's correct. And so, um, as the maker of atrazine, uh, Syngenta and other companies that are using large quantities of atrazine here in Hawaii, but you are not allowed to use that in Switzerland. Is that correct? Yeah, atrazine is a product that uh, was discovered in the 50s and uh, was discovered by an American company at that time and was acquired by Syngenta, which is a Swiss-based company today. Uh, Syngenta is a company that was uh, founded in 2001. And back to DOA, uh, my understanding is that the Paraquat is used by Kauai Coffee and many other large ag operations and that that's banned in over 36 countries. Is that correct? Or I'm not sure about the number of countries banned in, but it is used locally. It's a restricted use pesticide, it's an herbicide. Thank you. Just a 
follow-up. I never quite heard the answer. Is is atrazine banned in Switzerland? Yes. Thank you. It's uh, it's actually. I just never heard the answer to to, to send this question. Thank you very much. Yeah, and it's actually a well studied. There's about seven thousand studies on atrazine. I'm not. Oh, you're listening. Are you saying that it's safe? I'm saying that there's 7,000 studies. Okay, so why, why not in Switzerland then? I mean, I think you're defending atrazine here, right? So let me just have you elaborate. Why do you think Switzerland bans it? It's, uh, it's uh, in my feeling, it's a political ban. Okay, thank you. Not a scientific one. Thanks. Um, Tom, I have a question for you, and that is um, when we read the labels, because that's often said, you know, the label is the law. We read the labels for a specific product. Do they ever recommend setbacks? Some labels may refer to setbacks. Do not apply their waterways to 25 feet distance. Uh, some may, uh, I think if you use it in a nursery, depends on the type of application. They may have a buffer zone, maybe 100 feet. But this would be kind of on the How do they come up with those? How do they come scientific. Up with those Again, the, the label certain products. Most of the products will not have a number. What they will have is a statement that says avoid drift or do not apply this product in a way that will contact a worker or anyone else. So some of these, um, since the focus is on RUPs, um, there are RUPs that um, are identified as you need to set back a certain distances. Not, uh, not that I'm Or sure. that there are, okay. Yes. But that whole label takes into consideration the product, how it's so used. Based on the product, there are recommended setbacks for certain reasons. And also, yeah. And the wind drift. Okay, okay. we heard earlier today that the um, you know, dust is, does the Department of Agriculture, do we consider that, or the Department of Health, do we consider um, dust uh, as part of a, a drifting a nuisance or uh, indeed a problem? For we do not regulate dust or vapors. Should we? Well, that, the dust would be the Department of Health. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was a, um, if I may, a couple more. Um, there was an incident in November in Wailua. Um, there was a small, there was a little co-op of small farmers. And um, they live right behind some folks on uh, Kuhi Street. And they got a big waft of something nauseous. So hazmat came out and everything else. And it was found out that there was a, an um, RUP applied by a, um, uh, a migrant farmer. And um, I, I'm just, uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is here's, here's a guy who was not authorized to be using the RUP, a Thionix or something like that. And it was a windy day and it blew into these guys' house. So he's, he's doubly violating the laws. How do we go back and, and, and go after that? And what, what's the procedure for trying to you know, get somebody who clearly violates the law like that? On that case, my inspector went out. Uh, what the hazmat found was an empty container of Fanex that was there. We could not find an applicator to link to any pesticide. And I think some of the people out there said it smelled more like malathion. So again, find, just finding this Fanex container, it was surmised that, oh, this was... Oh, it wasn't measured. Yeah, uh, well, this was what was being used. So we could not find an applicator. Do you take samples of, of the, uh, the, the crops or anything in the vicinity? Do you, do you swab or? By the time we got out there, it was fairly, uh, the time, there was no odor to be detected. Okay, thanks. And the last question then on, on drift. Um, there's certain rules on the label. I imagine that, that, that it has not more than five miles an hour wind or not more than ten. Certain do, do products, have those in there? certain products uh, will say do not apply if the wind speed exceeds 14 miles an hour. Again, if you see the language that says avoid drift, and again, I'll have to get back to the EPA registration of the product. They spent like five to 10 years looking at all the data. And the data, yes, it does come in from the, the uh, registrar. However, it is EPA that sets how and what you report. It's not, I'm just feeding you this and you're just gonna take that. So I, I wanna clarify that. So, final question, Chair, please. Um, so, the, the concern really is people don't want this stuff drifted under their house. I don't want it. <laughs> you don't want it. You, I don't know anybody that wants drift coming in. How can we assure the public? How can we beef up 
our Department of Agriculture or inspect it, or what can we do to help meet that? Because I think that might cut straight to the crux of the main thing here. is if you, the residents, you detect an odor and you suspect it's a pesticide, call us. A lot of times a hazmat responds first. Uh, we get another call. We are working with the Department of Education for them to also let us know when it happens so we can get out there right away and do our investigation. And this is for statewide. The other thing is school IPM. We are working with DOE and they hired a consultant to do school IPM. For the last four years, I have been working with DOE facilities uh, and offered training to the school administrators, head custodians, cafeteria managers. They apply pesticides. We will do pesticide training, uh, label comprehension, and, and safety. And this is, we've offered this statewide, and I've got three enforcement uh, staff to do that. Wouldn't you say, though, it's too late once the drift of pesticides already come through our community mm -hmm. for people just to make the call? Mm -hmm. No. The pesticides already gone through their house? Mm -hmm. uh, we can come and take swab samples to be tested. find out what it was. Yes. But what now that samples. family, that child, what was your name, Chelsea? Yes. She's got a child that's got autism. She's living out in Kauai. She's got pesticide drift. Sure, she can call and tell you and have your one inspector and whatever other support, you know, get involved, but... Her family has now been exposed to the pesticide drift. I would call that too late. I have a question over there from, from Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. I wanted to kind of explore a different element of, of this measure. Um, my questions are for you, Scott. The buffer zones have flag distances on them, and with whatever the, the figure may be at a later time, you're potentially rendering a lot of productive land as fallow. And by doing that, are we opening up the state to potential lawsuits from people who now, or companies or farmers, who can now not be productive with whatever the distance is, and then have them turn around and sue the state for the loss of revenues from that land that we've almost kind of condemned? Uh, yes, would be the short answer, Vice Chair. Potentially, that is the case. And on another element about um, the, the students in the schools um, uh, being, being uh, protected here, is there any way that we can tailor the restrictions of, of uh, pesticides to certain hours of the day? So if the students are there from 8 till 3, then we tell the farmers that if you're going to be spraying, you do it after hours uh, when there aren't kids that are going to be prone or subjected to these pesticides. I would uh, think, yes, that's something we, we could definitely try to work with, Vice Chair. And I noticed in your testimony, you're going to do some type of fact-finding project on Kauai. Can you tell us what you're searching for with that uh, project? The joint fact-finding that was started this January in conjunction with the Mayor's Office on Kauai and the Hawaii Department of Agriculture put together a, a team to take a look at all the concerns that were brought out in the course of the testimony for 2491, uh, the bill that went through the county government and was overturned by Judge Kern. To the extent that the community has concerns, whether it's public health concerns or it's concerns about the pesticide applications on the island, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture wants to know if, if they're reality is, if there's anything going on. So put together a team that's run by Peter Adler, who's, who's done this work before. He has um, retained Bruce Anderson, who was once the head of the Department of Health here in the state of Hawaii and is an epidemiologist. So he'll be looking at the concerns. The concerns that were expressed by Wendell earlier, and I've spoken with Wendell on the west side of Kauai, you know, we need to find out if, if that's in fact the case. If, but, you know, again, it's, it's scientific inquiry. We need to go in and substantiate what's going on with pesticide usage on the west side of Kauai and around the state, because it's a model for the rest of the state, and, and substantiate or find out that it's not the case. There's some other factors that are contributing to it. And so in the course of this next year, we're going to 
address all of the concerns that came out in the course of 2491. That's the work that we're doing on this. I think Wendell, the researcher, provided some very compelling testimony about how you, you put all these various chemicals together, make some kind of pesticide cocktail out of all of this, and then all of a sudden the, the research numbers could shift. So in your research on Kauai, are you looking at not just a singular use of these pesticides, but then as a, for lack of a better term, a pesticide cocktail and what those effects would be on the neighboring communities? That is one of the things that will be looked at. In the end, we'll also find out if we need to do further research. You know, when I first went to Kauai um, with, with the governor and sat in a room, what I was told is that there were cancer clusters on the west side of Kauai. So the state has done a study on, on cancer on Kauai and we found out every type of cancer, consistent with, with national and state trends, is in decline, except for melanoma. You know, it was stated in that meeting that the runoff, that the pesticide usage was so heavy on the west side, it was running off into the waterways and going down and killing off sea life. So the Department of Agriculture funded a study by the state's Department of Health and Environmental Health to take a look at water quality statewide, which is how we found out Manoa was far worse than any place else in the state for pesticide runoffs. But there was nothing that was above tolerance levels on Kauai. Everything was significantly less. And currently there's a study that should be coming out shortly from the Department on Health uh, on birth defects, which was uh, another um, claim that potentially pesticide usage on Kauai was producing birth defects. So, you know, much as the question about dust, you know, we don't, at the Department of Agriculture, regulate dust. But if it's coming off of agricultural lands, the Department of Agriculture is concerned, and that's why we're taking a look on the west side of Kauai and every place. And we'll take a look and we'll see what's in the dust. We'll do that testing. Um, but we're trying to be proactive at this point and, and see if we can follow up on the concerns of the public. Thank you, Director. I have one final question over here, if I might, from the Chair. Yeah, for DOE. Uh, are there any laws requiring companies to disclose the chemicals that they're using? For example, if I'm a homeowner and I'm living adjacent to the fields that are being sprayed, and I may suspect I'm being exposed to drift. Um, I think no is the short answer, but I'll defer to you. Right. Only if we are responding to a complaint, we would ask them to reveal what is uh, was used. And also the other part, if there's exposure in the school or to a, a family, we respond, we will give that information to the treating physician. And the follow-up is, uh, are there any laws that prevent the application of RUPs on fields directly adjacent to schools, hospitals, or homes? No, there are no laws. Not that I think. Okay. All right, good. One more question for Department of Agriculture. Uh, Scott? Yes, I, I, I hear you, you say that you've uh, tested and found that, you know, no no seemingly dangerous levels of pesticides in places like West Kauai and places where we've seen so much concern. You've heard, um, you've seen three counties pass laws on this subject. You've heard a list of 400 members of the public coming forward with extreme concerns. We've heard some of the stories. I hear you saying that there's really no problem and we shouldn't put any controls in. What do you make of this public concern? Is it mass hysteria? What do you think is going on here? Um, I, I don't know that I would characterize any of my, my comments or thoughts in seeing that we don't need to, to regulate. And having a conversation about pesticide use in the state is useful. So I, wel I welcome the opportunity. But if you look at the advent of, of this conversation, it, it started with an attempt to ban GMOs. It was against the, the biotech companies. And the pesticide usage became a wedge issue. And you know, in two of the counties, they were anti-biotech prohibitions. And on Kauai, it started out as an anti-biotech prohibition and morphed into a pesticide regulation bill. Okay, so so, so that's, so, so it, sorry, Chair. Yes, I'm sorry, not too. No, please. Well, so, I mean, okay, so GMO is, is a related issue, and it, 
But we've heard so many stories of people concerned about their neighbors being sick, the gentleman from Kauai. You know, uh, do you think this is really all a ruse? You know, uh, this is this is a, sort of a farce to be a proxy for the GMO party? Or do you think there's real concerns about pesticide use in our communities? You know, certainly there, there's concern. You know, I was just giving you the, the advent of it. Um, I'm familiar with that. So, the question again. Uh, well, what do you make of all this concern over over? There, there's this clamoring, both at, at the county government level and at the public level, for some increased controls over pesticide use near schools, residences, and large quantities of the of restricted use pesticides. What do you make of it all in the face of your statement that that, that these regulations we're proposing are necessary or appropriate? Yeah, and again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have the conversation and, and look at regulations. I was just saying they should be driven by science. And so, and in, in the same way that this chair um, with the Department of Agriculture started the joint fact-finding on Hawaii and is going to do it elsewhere, I take seriously the concerns <coughs> of the public. And to the extent that there's a problem with pesticide usage any place in the state, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture wants to know about it so that we can react. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to wrap up this statement and then we'll come to some votes. Um, I take to heart, I mean, I, I have a great deal of respect for you, you know, and, it, and I genuinely appreciate your, your directness and candor. But when you say you take it seriously, and I knew you take it seriously, but then when I you sit across the table and you tell me you have one individual for Kauai and one individual for Maui to police, to regulate the issue. And I sit next to a former head of DLNR, who's now a senator, and she reminds me that we passed, you know, and promoted additional positions, not to mention, of course, you as leaders of the department. Looking at this gigantic outcry, again, I use that word because it is big, okay? I don't understand if we say we're taking it seriously. Those are those are words, but the actions. When you have multiple families that need some response, and we have multiple chem, uh, chemical companies and multiple other users that we have to follow up with, even if we decide and determine ultimately that there's no significant or serious threat, do we not demonstrate a more serious concern? with a lot more manpower and focus. And that is the question I have for you. It does not appear to me that the problem and the concern, because concern in society is a major part of what we do, because we need to reassure people. We need to study. I'm not trying to open up a can of worms with the precautionary principle, but I'm saying from a psychological standpoint, when many thousands of members, in fact, we're over 100,000 members that have reached out as a part of this dialogue, don't feel safe or satisfied, do we not owe them more attention and regulation, even if it ultimately proves safe? We spend a lot more money and time on issues that have affect far fewer people. So what is the department prepared to do to address that concern? We are, in fact, filling our, our, our positions that are open share. The, the challenge for the Hawaii Department of Agriculture is, in the last economic downturn, we lost 40% of our staffing. 40% of one? Of the entire department. <laughs> okay. Because 40% so of one we, is what we, we got now. Yeah, we, have, um, we have 110 open positions that we're trying to fill. And so we need to give each of the, the different aspects of work that we do in the department. Yeah. Um, equal weight. So I work on it. I worked on it twice already this week. We are filling the positions, but we also have to fill our plant quarantine inspector positions and others. So we're quickly moving on it. We appreciate that. Additional yeah. uh, inspectors on both Maui and Kauai. Okay. We'll take a brief recess. We're going to come to a vote on these measures and then proceed. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. We are in recess. Hope to come to a vote on this bill. Uh, perhaps in a few more minutes. And we've been hearing uh, testimony on uh, Senate Bill 793, 
which requires a uh, large pesticide users so restricted use pesticides to disclose um, use and to observe buffer zones uh, by schools and residences I believe and it has drawn a lot of uh, public attention it's a hot issue it's a law it's a it, the bill is very similar to an ordinance passed on Kauai I believe that was uh, Bill 2491 of a couple years ago that was passed and was challenged in court by the chemical corporations. A, uh, I believe the case is still ongoing, but the, at this point the, uh, the judge, Judge Curran, ruled that uh, this sort of thing is what the states should do. So that kind of brings us to this bill. There are a lot of people here advocates uh, from the community, the uh, director of the Department of Agriculture, a lot of the state guys, uh, a lot of people, a contingent from uh, Kauai, activists from Kauai. Um, <laughs> We're waiting for um, some, a little break, and then we'll, there'll be discussion and hopefully some kind of uh, vote on it. Hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for your testimony. You have anything to say, no? Um, I thought that was really telling when um, we get a little further. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when uh, the Syngenta representative, whose name is Mark Phillipson, Mark, and was formerly one of the heads of Hawaii Crop Improvement that's Association, right. they just rotate executives yeah, of chemical do. companies yeah. as the head. <laughs> um, and we were asking about atrazine, and he said, "We have seven thousand studies." And the senator's like, "Wait, are, are you telling me that atrazine is safe?" And he's like, "I'm telling you, we have." Seven I think I think some might be by Tyrone Hayes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right about like changing the sex of frogs. Right. Atrazine versus your hey. testosterone. That's uh, Nomi of uh, Babes Against Biotech, and we also have uh, Alicia Malofiti, who is the uh, head of um, a lobbyist for um, Hoi Crop Improvement Association. Last year's. Now representing another. Hey, <laughs> we're on a little break. We're waiting, uh, and I th and, uh, and the senators. Actually, I don't know if they're going to take a vote, or there are a number of other bills that they're going to go forward and take testimony in these other bills, and then come back and do a decision making. Or, or no. oh, here we're back. Thank you everyone for your patience um, um, and for your cooperation. Recommendation on Senate Bill 793 is to pass with technical amendments. Members, um, uh, well, it opens for discussion in a moment. We've had excellent input from many people today. Uh, in addition, and this will apply for this bill and for the next, um, we would like to uh, add in the committee report the following. A um, watershed definition needs to be uh, improved and enhanced in the measure. We'll work with our chair of water land on that definition going forward. Disclosure is felt to be most important in many ways in these bills. We also want to include that we have a concern that disclosure of combinations of chemicals be emphasized going forward. So. I want to keep things basically clean in this large debate. Um, this is the first hearing, and it's going to require a lot more input. Uh, we will, of course, need to uh, vet and get recommendations on the specific distances and amounts if this bill is going to become law. There are recommendations contained in multiple pieces of testimony, but I will enter into the committee report. Um, 
some recommendations that came from the Center for Food Safety as recommendations, but that does need to be uh, vetted with the House members who have already begun to take this up. Members, discussion. Chair, thank you for the thank you for your comments on that, and thank you for having this hearing. And it's a, it's a very uh, important subject for everybody. I think we're all concerned about health and safety. And there's no doubt about that. Um, I'm going to be voting with reservations, and, and my reservations um, are based on, um, you know, there's, if we're trying to talk, tackle the health and safety issues, and you know, there's a lot of farmers spraying a lot of things, and I, I don't think we should look at just one particular industry that has, has been discussed. So I think we should look at the global application, and if we need buffer zones around schools, then it should apply to everybody. Uh, I think the uh, exclusions for termite is, is problematic because termites, I think everybody in this house has been, in a, everybody here has been in a house that it was termite treated and you went into that house the same day they took the bag off the house. So we've all had experience in this, we've all survived it hopefully, but termite treatment is a, an intensive heavy application and there are many houses right adjacent to schools so I, I don't think we should be uh, again, parsing these things out. Um, today there is no discussion or questions about um, what is the appropriate setback. Should it be 50 feet, 100 feet, a mile, you know, the other island? Um, how, how far should that be? There was no comp there was no educated discussion of that, so I, I think this, this uh, measure lacks that kind of um, uh, critical discussion. I do support additional inspectors. I do support additional and robust reporting. I think that we need the transparency for that. I, I, that's not problematic. I, we need more outreach and more education. The uh, incident I mentioned in Waialua was a guy that shouldn't have been doing it, but we've got to get him before he does it. So for those reasons, uh, I want to stay engaged with this. Uh, the conversation has to go forward. We have to do something this year to address these concerns, but, uh, but I do have a lot of reservations, so uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, mention those now. Thank you, Chair. Right. In fact, uh, my apologies for not mentioning that we will put also in the committee report um, that we'd like to pursue the consideration of exclusion for termite treatment. That was a part of the conversation that, in my notes, I um, neglected to mention. Thank you for that as well. Yes. Chair, I just also want to echo the, the need to uh, accommodate termite treatment um, because occasionally most houses do need that, even though some of those chemicals might be dangerous. It's a one time and one time blue moon type of treatment, and it's simply an impossible situation to prohibit that. So I hope we can accommodate the termite treatments, and I hope that we uh, note our concern about any large user who's doing these pesticides, not just agriculture. Notwithstanding our hatred of termites, I do want to protect wise children, so we're going to recommend moving this bill. Members? May we go to a vote? Are there other comments? That no, I just want to be clear. This is, uh, three separate committees, all chairs are uh, concurrent with the uh, committee report and the amendments, yes. and then the, the vote will be taken separately by three committees. Yes, thank you. Just for the members of the public. That's very important. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> yes, another comment? Sure. Um, I, I'm going to support the bill moving forward to keep the conversation going, but in addition to the comments made by the other parties, I guess one of the things that I think would be fair to look at is the definition of watershed and how that would impact the um, areas requiring buffers. Yeah, in, fact, in fact, we're going to rely on you um, to work on some watershed definitions of the water land. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Members, any other comments or questions? Yes. Thank you for um, including in the committee report the combination yes. of um, pesticide use. I think there was also a suggestion about making sure that the schools do have an integrated pesticide management plan. And I don't know how we can um, incorporate that into the committee report. But if we don't have that, I, I understand that Scott and them are working <coughs> on it. But to me, that's critical. That's immediately on the campus. I need to make sure they have something that protects the children. Chair, in fact, thank you for mentioning that, um, uh, though because we're in the moment, our next bill with education focuses more on the schools, and I think that is particularly relevant in that bill, but I think it's also relevant here. This is the omnibus bill, though, so, so for sure, absolutely. So we will include that in our committee report as well. It's a very big recommendation. I appreciate the discussion that uh, we had this afternoon. I, le I learned a lot about pesticides and pesticide usage. I 
will have to be voted with reservations only because my discomfort is the, the lack of direct correlation between the pesticide use and the, the detrimental effect on, on individuals out there. And considering the Department of Agriculture is going ahead um, with a project on Kauai that will get us a lot more clarity on any kind of direct causation, I wish we could wait for that. I understand um, the, the Chair's desire to, to move forward with this. And I do think that if we move too hastily on this, we really could be opening ourselves up to a multitude of, of lawsuits, which I don't know how we're going to pay for if we're going to kind of indirectly be condemning land with these bound of buffer zones that are still kind of squishy as to what those numbers will, will look like. Uh, so for those reasons, I will be voting with reservations, but appreciate the Chair's uh, precautionary approach and not waiting for limbs to fall off and their eyes to start growing up on people, but uh, looking and, and trying, I'm trying to find the balance between uh, where that fine line is uh, for what is, is a prudent way to approach this issue. So thank you. Thank you. And I'll just wrap up with, I, I, re I, mean, I really greatly appreciate those comments. Just so people understand how it came to the point where I proposed these, you know, this series of measures this year with colleagues, and that was... Um, because after watching the two-year process in the counties, I, I wasn't prepared to promote um, this legislation two years ago, but I want to be very candid. Um, they have been having that battle discussion, and to be clear, if we don't act and act fairly aggressively, a lot of that work won't get done. And I say this not disparagingly, but because there are so many priorities out there and I'm, I'm sure that our, our Department of Ag Director picks like 20 very, very valuable priorities, it will not happen. And so from a health immediacy standpoint, because children are going from age one, two years ago, that her baby was one, and who's now three with the diagnosis, in the interval when the county has been stymied in a legal fashion, that's why we're here today. Okay. So uh, recommendation, as we've described, is to go with tech amendments on 793 with those mentions, Chris, in the committee report. Start with the vote from the health committee. Which would be my vice chair. Sorry. Yes. Uh, chair Green. Aye. Vice chair votes with reservations. Senator Baker. Excuse Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Revere. Reservations. Senator Ruderman. Aye. Senator Sloan. Excuse. Excuse. Chair, your recommendations adopted. For the committee on agriculture, the same recommendations to pass the amendments. The vice chair. Okay, calling, calling the vote. Uh, chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes uh, with reservations. Senator John Oakland? Aye. Senator Taniguchi? Excused. Senator Thielen? Yes. Senator Wakai? Aye. Uh -huh. Reservations. And Senator Sloan? Excused. Carry measure passes. Okay, same, same recommendation for the uh, <coughs> Energy Environment Committee. Chair votes aye. Chair Garber votes aye. Senator Green? Aye. Senator Donald Curry is excused. Senator Howard votes aye. Senator Slim is excused. The recommendation is adopted by the Environment Committee. Thank you, members. Thank you, everyone. Uh, on Senate Bill 1037, um, the recommendation okay. to 